Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 1 who is writing Paul who is Paul is an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus now I know already and I make this as a premise if you don't believe that what I'm reading are the pure words of God infallible inspired, preserved, which is the King James Bible, the 1611 after seven purification, so to, so, so to say 1769, if you don't believe that those are the pure words of God preserved, infallible for us in this the dispensation of grace, whatever I say will enter in this year and will come up from the other one. When you come to the Bible, you got to make a decision to believe. Okay? Because if you don't believe, don't come to the Bible. Why playing? But if you believe, come to the Bible. But then <clears throat> you got to make sure you're saved. Because if you're not saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling in you. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that will help you, me, us, to read and, and understand what we read and, and, and uh, apply to our spirit man, because the Holy Spirit is the one who wrote this book. What better than the author of the book to explain to you the book? I am only an ambassador for Christ. I have no authority on my own. My authority is this book so I say better say that the, the authority is in the book in the pure words of God because he has written the poor an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God is not part of the 12 is a, a new apostle okay in the dispensation of grace which is a new dispensation with the gospel of grace which is a new gospel which is not John 3 16 okay it's first Corinthians 15 1 to 4 particular 3 and 4 eh? Paul saying that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life with this which is in Christ Jesus. This book doesn't say that the promise of life, in other words, God promises life, eternal life, according to any religion on the face of the earth. The fact that you name or you use the name of Jesus, it doesn't guarantee you because you need to be saved and sealed by grace. You need to allow the Spirit of God to take you out of Adam and push you into Christ by believing and receiving what Christ has accomplished. How the Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that he was buried and there was again the third day according to the Scriptures. Period. You don't do anything. You don't say prayers. You don't confess sins. You don't jump in the water. You don't roll yourself on the, on the floor. Nothing. You don't say a word. Nothing. Just believe what Christ has accomplished. I am not a pastor. I don't even believe there are pastors in this dispensation. As a believer, I tell you, I could say like many, repeat this prayer with me. No, no repeating. You, person, individual, pray to Almighty God, understand you are the sinner and Christ is the Savior and you tell God in your spirit eh, that you believe that Christ died for your sins and he was buried and rose again for the day for your justification Romans 4 25 Christ was delivered for our offenses was risen again for our justification don't try don't try in any possible way to help God he doesn't need your help he doesn't need my help. God is Almighty God. He is able to save you and seal you for eternity. When you believe, it's between you and God. I told you, Christ is the mediator. God is a spirit. God sees everything. He knows everything. Okay? So, in the moment you, in your heart, believe what Christ has accomplished, by the power of the cross, eh? because He died for our sins, all your sins, past sins, present sins, future sins, because we're sinners, okay? 
Once you believe that, and then you believe that he was buried because he really died. But then on the third day, he rose again to justify you, to save you. Huh? Then when you believe that, God saves you and the Holy Spirit of God seals you until the day of the redemption of the Persian possession unto the praise of his glory. In other words, Christ saved you and you believe it. The Holy Spirit seals you and guarantees he puts you in Christ, you are saved eternally. You might think this is too easy. Why don't you do it? Uh, I don't believe this because my pastor... Wait a second, I told you. The promise of life is in Christ Jesus. It's not in what your pastor says. It's not what I say. I give you the word of God. What is that profit to me? Nothing. I'm not interested in the fact that you become a follower of me. You need to follow Christ by following the teachings of the Apostle Paul. Every believer has got this call. Paul, an Apostle Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Out there, there are millions of religions, religions and religious practices or rituals or formulas, whatever it is, that will give you a promise of life that they cannot keep because they're not God. By doing this and not doing that, by believing this and not believing that, in reality, God has done it all. Your part is to believe what God has done, receive it, and at that point you can thank Him. Poor Apostle Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, is writing to Timothy. In some Bibles, you can read also another part, Timotheus, is the same name. My dearly beloved son, is not a son in the flesh, is a son in the faith, because Timothy believed the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God through the ministry of Paul, and so he calls him my dearly beloved son. But in reality, given that this book are the pure words of God, given that these words are inspired by the Holy Ghost, God calls Timothy dearly beloved son. Because once you believe this gospel, you know what happens? Not only God saves you, but He accepts you in the beloved, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's it written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, King James Bible. Accepted in the beloved. That's absolutely amazing. Let me clarify this. It's not me, it's not you, that we accept Jesus. Poor Jesus out the outside knocking at the door, please let me know. You got it really wrong. Jesus humbled himself, but at the moment is at the right hand of the Father in glory. Okay, so it's not knocking, it's telling you to believe and receive his gospel that he gave to Paul for us. Grace, mercy, and peace. The salutation, the greeting is grace. Is mercy and peace. That's the message. So this great God, this righteous God, this most holy God, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the Messiah King of Israel, the High Priest of Israel, the Shepherd of Israel, the Savior, the Redeemer of Israel, has become also the Lord, the Redeemer, the Savior of the body, the body of Christ, the new creature. And it's giving grace. <clears throat> so every time you read the letters of Paul, you will find grace at the opening and at the end. You won't find war, curses, grace. Grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. Eternal life, we deserve, no. But Christ, shedding his blood, atoned for our sins. A-T-O-N-E-D. I say because my pronunciation is horrible. I know, I apologize. I'm here to preach even though my English is not good. I got the words here. Grace, mercy. God is not giving us what we deserve. Eternal hell and destruction. 
So grace now, mercy and peace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That is written in Romans 5, chapter 1, verse 1, Romans 5. So, to Timothy, my dear beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. From God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. You can be sure that the entire Godhead, because God is not just God, is a Godhead. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, capital F. The Word, capital W. And the Holy Ghost, capital HG. And these three are one. The entire Godhead has been operating to save us. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I say thank you, Lord. And then Paul says in 2 Timothy 1 3, I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Now the apostle once again expressing the heart of God because we all sinners, okay, but as personalities, as type of people, we are different. Some people are hard, some people are soft. Some people seem to be strong, some people seem to be weak. Some people, people are very bold, some people are shy. Well, Timothy seemed to be timid, shy, easily, easily ashamed. So Paul is praying night and day for Timothy. This is the care of God and the Spirit of God for the believer. You could be Timothy. You could, I say, you know. I could be Timothy. I don't know. The point is, God loves us. He wants to comfort us. He wants to give us the comfort, the full assurance of understanding of what He has accomplished. God wants that you know who He is and what He has accomplished so that you don't go to hell in the lake of fire. The, the will of God, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We'll see this. So he say, I thank God whom I said from my forefathers with pure conscience, because even though he was persecuting, you can see that in the book of Acts, okay, in particular in the book in, in, in chapter 9, he was convinced that Christ was not the real Messiah. He was zealous for the religion of his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But he was with a pure conscience. He was zealous thinking and believing that he was doing the will of God. So he's not saying something strange here. It's the truth. That without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my praise and night and day. But of course later on, after he meets the Lord in that glorious appearing in Acts 9, on the way to Damascus, he understands that he was wrong. And that Christ indeed was God in the flesh incarnate and now glorified was indeed the Messiah, the King of Israel. And now Christ has revelations after revelation, which I mean progressive revelation. That's why you have 13 letters, Romans to Philemon, written by the Apostle Paul, more than anyone, any other author in the Bible. Why? Because the message is God is absolutely the most important message you receive because it regards the eternal salvation or your never dying soul. The care of God and the love of God expressed in the, in the love of Christ, expressed in the operation of God to save you is absolutely amazing. Don't strive with your Creator. Receive Christ as your Savior because it's a question of life and death. In this life we're born, we live and we die but once you will die, eternity. You want to be in eternity in heavenly places with Christ. Completely transformed, glorified, a glorified body, mind, and spirit to serve the Lord in heavenly places in Christ. 
instead of going to the lake of fire. Just because you reject the simple and the glorious gospel of Christ. How did Christ die for your sins? According to the scriptures. And they was buried rose again that day according to the scriptures. Greatly desiring to see thee, be mindful of thy tears that might be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, in thy mother Eunice, and I'm unpersuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put in thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Timothy is saved, but it needs to be stirred up. All of us, we need to be stirred up because sometimes we are complacent. Well, all right, you know what I'm saying? We don't care. There is a number, a staggering number of souls that are going to hell every day because they have, they have not believed this glorious gospel. Somebody's got to preach it. Somebody has got to reach. I'm using this internet only for one reason. In the hope, prayer, hope that you, whoever you are, a man, a woman, a young God, any part of the world, a Jew may be, a Gentile, might believe, receive what Christ has done, and you might get saved and sealed for eternity. And this to the glory of God and for the eternal benefit of your never dying soul. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is indeed by the putting on of my hands. And then it's, it's saying this, that is so encouraging because it's in writing to Timothy, but Timothy is a member of the body of Christ. So in, in reality, this is a message for every member, every saved and sealed member of the body of Christ. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. It's not talking physical fear. Of course, if you are afraid, I don't know, of flying or being uh, on high rises, or to go too, too fast with the car. Understand, that's normal. That's a survival instinct inbuilt in us. God has not given us a spirit of fear that we are fear that now God is going to punish us into hell because we, He has saved us. Once you're saved, you know what it means? You're in Christ. A Christ is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul wrote, your life, now that you are saved and sealed, if you believe in this gospel, is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is alive, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. At the moment, you are saved, you are sealed, but you, see, you still see this old body. Maybe you are handsome or good looking. doesn't really matter. The flesh is not important. Not to God. But what you believe is very important to him. You have to make a choice in this life. You either choose him or you don't. He's not going to force you. But as an ambassador for Christ, I got to tell you that you need to believe and receive this gospel. That's it. I'm not saying you need to come to my church. You need to pay tithes to me and offerings. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you got to worship me and call me reverend. His holiness, forget it. All you need to do is to do nothing but believe and receive what Christ has done. You get that? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power. What kind of power is this? Because you got some sects or religion that are talking about the power of casting devils, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the leper. You can't do this now. This was reserved. To the disciple of the Lord, the twelve, Christ gave them this kind of power when he sent them to preach to Israel the glorious gospel of the kingdom. The Christ is the king, was coming, the Messiah of Israel. They had to believe and receive that. And so in the kingdom, they're going to be sick people. You understand? They're not going to be people possessed by devils. They're not going to be people with lepr leprosy. Everybody... It's going to enjoy life, abundance of life. But we can go through being saved and see a lot of sufferance physically, but His grace is sufficient. That's what the Lord taught to Paul in this dispensation. He's given us salvation by grace 
eternal life, the free gift, and His grace is sufficient, and He's given us a spirit, which is not a spirit of fear, but a power. Why do you think Paul wrote in Romans 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, I repeat, the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. All men, all, me, all women everywhere can be saved instantaneously the moment they believe receive this glorious gospel. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and the love, that's the love of Christ, that's the love of the Spirit. It's not my love that I love you today, tomorrow, forget. This is the love of God that's been shed in our hearts by the Spirit Holy Spirit has been given to us and of a sound mind. If you know me well, like ask my wife, you might think I'm a big crazy. <laughs> but we're talking about sound mind is the mind of Christ. Is the doctrine, the teaching. Once you know that you know that you know that you're saved and so you're not because of anything you've done or that you will do that you're doing because of what Christ has done once and for all. The glory belongs to the Lord. At the beginning, in the middle, and the end. But praise God for that, because Christ, being God, is death on that cross could save you, but he could die being man as a man. For you, for me, for us, God doesn't die. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of a sound mind. You see now the encouragement of Timothy. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. I think this is appropriate for every one of us. Sometimes we think, uh, how am I I'm going to tell this person about Christ, what Christ has done? If you're ashamed, you're afraid of being rejected. Guess what? Be rejected. But give that person the possibility, the chance in this life to hear the gospel, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Believe it, be, receive it, and be saved. You're going to be eternally joyful and rejoice in eternity for this. Because Christ died for say, to save sinners, not to condemn to dwell. He came to save sinners. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. He's in, he's in prison, he might say, my apostle is in prison. But there is a reason it's for our glory, because he had to write those letters. God allowed this. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. People say, what now? I heard that preacher say that when you come to Jesus, all your problems are solved. What do you need? Physical healing? Come here, we pray for you. Just before you can put, uh, put some money there in offering for us. What's the problem? You got problem in relationships? We will pray for you. Just go and speak with the spiritual counselor. The, the counseling comes $300 a session, but it's worthwhile, you know. Everything is going to be hunky dory. The wind of God is going to blow in the sails of your boat. Health, wealth, prosperity, abundance. Those false prophets. Religion is full of it. It's full of them. No, no, listen now. Be not, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. How? According to the power of God. God has given you the power to withstand anything. You simply believe in, and go in action. For the power of the gospel. Who has saved us? Who? who? The Lord Jesus. You see that the past tense? It's not get the, you getting saved. How this false religion say to you, ah, you know, yeah, you Jesus did die, but you getting saved. You must prove. 
Show us the money, honey. Show us the proof, do you say? There's no proof because it's not that you get saved by works. You say by grace is the work of God, not your work. Yeah, if you grow in Christ, if you learn, if you allow the doctrine, possibly you will allow the Spirit of Christ work in and through you and do works that are worthy of the vocation you've been called with. But the reality is your salvation is not no string is attached. It's not into the well. What you've done, you're doing, you will do. No, it's what Christ has done once and for all, who has saved us and called us. When you believe, when you hear the gospel, that's the call of God. With a holy calling, of course, it's God calling you. Not according to our works. Is that clear? Not according to our works. But according to to his own purpose and grace, please notice this. But according to his purpose and grace, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us, the body of Christ, in Christ Jesus, when? Before the world began. What do you mean? That's the wisdom of God. Before the world began. God knowing that his creatures would turn against him and go with Satan, provided a way of salvation, which is greater, far beyond your, your, your wildest imagination. This is called the mystery. It was hidden in God. That one day Christ will come, live in the glory of heaven, come down to earth, to his uh, earth, to his nation, Israel, preach to them the gospel of the kingdom. He knew the only little group would believe. But then he knew that he, would go, he was going to call this man. He's enemy number one, you know. Solo Tarsus, he gave to him the revelation of the mystery. In this, the dispensation of the grace of God. The gospel of the grace of God in Christ, in which the sinner... By believing and receiving what Christ has done, get saved. Who has saved us, you see, done deal, and called us with the holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest. You see, the mystery now is revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. When? Is it talking when Jesus was on the, 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 the streets of Jerusalem? And Israel? No. When Christ appeared in a glorious appearing in the book of Acts, in, in Acts 9, to his enemy number one, to Saul of Tarsus, which becomes Paul, and saved him and commissioned him to be the apostle, preacher, and teacher of the Gentiles. But it's now made manifest that by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, he's going to appear a second time to come and take us. Who has, well, look what he's done, look what he's done who has abolished death. At this point, I hear people say, <laughs> but people still die. die. Yes, yes, people still die. It's necessary. You cannot go to heaven if you don't die. Because you can't go to heaven with this flesh and blood, corrupt as it is, this vile body. But you will need a transformation, and God is going to do this. It's going to transform, change your vile body, like his glorious body. It's going to be a new glorified body in heavenly places. But he has abolished death, which is, we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were children of disobedience. We were children of wrath. Ungodly sinners, enemies of God, we were dead. But this has been abolished. But the death of Christ and his glorious resurrection, who has abolished death, so don't fear death anymore because this is an entrance in the very presence of Almighty God and has brought life and has brought life, eternal life, and immortality. You see, immortality means you never die again to light manifested through the gospel. Which gospel? The gospel of the grace of God. 
Whereunto, says Paul, whereunto this gospel? I am appointed a preacher. We have a preacher in Paul. I'm not a preacher. I'm just giving you what is written. And an apostle. I am not the apostle. We have the apostle Paul. Say so also Peter. Peter is not to you. Peter and the eleven, the twelve, but are the twelve apostles for the twelve tribes of Israel, which is not the body of Christ. Don't mix the program because that's a disaster, okay, spiritually speaking. You need to rightly divide the word of truth. Whereunto I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle and the teacher of the Gentiles. Here you got it. The majority of us Gentiles, we need a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher, and we got him because God gave him to us. Acts 9 15. The Lord Jesus from heaven, in this glorious appearance, in a vision to Ananias, said to him, because Ananias was afraid, you know, Ananias was a kingdom gospel believer, was a devout man, a believer, you know, he was praying this and that. But he was afraid to meet with Saul of Tarsus, you know, because he knew that he was persecuting the Jerusalem church. He told the Lord, so you know, you, like, like Jesus didn't know this. He saved him. He said, go that way. For it is a chosen vessel unto me. Who? Peter? No. Paul. <laughs> to bear my name to the Gentiles. Oh, praise the Lord. All of a sudden we become the target of this glorious gospel of grace. And kings and children of Israel. Because there were many children of Israel who had not believed the gospel of the kingdom. But God wanted to save them anyway. And that's why the, the gospel the Paul was preaching at that point could save those guys. Whereunto I'm appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. I mean, I mean, for a moment, think this guy's in prison, not because he, he robbed the bank or killed, I don't know. A mass murderer while he's preaching this gospel before yes he was a, a criminal he was a criminal he was a, a blasphemer he said himself in we read before in the other teaching in first Timothy he was a, a blasphemer a persecutor a injurious he was putting people to death because they believed that Jesus was the Messiah but things have changed drastically he received forgiveness of sins including the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost because he allowed the people of Israel to stone Stephen who spoke full of the Holy Ghost, Acts 7. But Paul says, for the which cause I also suffer these things. I'm in prison, okay, and I get persecuted, okay, and people want to kill me every day. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. Is he bragging? No. Why? He tells you. For I know whom I believe. You see, this is the secret. For I know whom I have believed. Do you know whom have you believed? Have you believed that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, when He died on the cross, He shed His blood, and was buried, rose again. He did it so that He would say to Paul that by you believing that, He will save you. You receiving that gospel, He will save you. Or you just believe that John 3, 16, where there is no blood, no cross, no death, no resurrection, nothing. Just God sent Christ to the world, to Israel. He wants people saved in that dispensation. But now, Paul says, For I know whom I believe, and I'm persuaded. You will come to this persuasion. I come to this persuasion too, through reading and studying this book. That he is able, he is able, I love this, that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. What are you committing to him? Here it is, my soul, Lord. You die for that is yours. Well, guess what? I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Which day is that? The, the day when we meet the Lord. Praise God Almighty. And then he says, Hold fast the form of sound words. No lose. Hold fast. Once you receive this word, hold them fast, learn, learn, memorize, 
download them in your heart. Yeah, you can download them on your computer, but download it in your spirit, man, in the inner man. All fast the form of sound words which thou heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. At this point, I know, oh, look, he's talking about me. Sir. No, because what is telling you, these are the words of Jesus. Remember, this is Christ from heaven now. Just like Christ on earth three years with twelve, Christ now from heaven is speaking to his new apostle with this new gospel, with this glorious message. So these are the words of Christ. In faith and love which is in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. You see what happens? When you believe, you don't need to go, Oh Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. You don't need to try to speak in tongues, to try to, to have visions and revelation. It's all written. You need simply to put a bit of application by reading, studying the word of truth. That good thing which was committed unto thee, your eternal salvation in this glorious gospel, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwells in us. After you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of His glory. This thou know, this is very sad, but it's real. That they all which are in Asia be turned away from me. If you wonder why you never heard this glorious gospel, it's because the majority of whatever you want to call it, I don't know, denominationalism, is, has abandoned Paul. Oh, they use bits and pieces of Paul, but in it, they twist it to support their doctrine. They don't go full on, 100% with the doctrine that the Lord from heaven gave to Paul. No, no, no. No, they push you under the law. Oh, they say, God saved you, but now you have to keep yourself saved, you know? Now you can do the law. You were not able to be saved before by your own flesh, and now you can keep yourself safe. You're not saved in the first place. But once you know that Christ has done it, you come to this fully to be fully persuaded, and you know that He's done it, or your part is to follow the instruction, the information, the, the directions, the body make them, <laughs> the doctrine that the Lord from heaven gives to Paul. And Paul started telling Timothy, this thou know, the old day which are in Asia be turned away from me. Already Paul was still alive. Imagine when he died, people talk about, you know, the church fathers, bunch of heretics, a bunch of heretics. Don't come to me with Augustine, San Tommaso da Quina. Don't come to me later with Calvin uh, or, or Arminius. We have a book. From Genesis to Revelation, every scripture is inspired, came out from the mouth of God. We just need to read, believe, rather dividing the word of truth, rather dividing the prophetic from the mystery, the law from grace, the covenants from grace, because we got no covenants. And believe and receive what Christ has accomplished in this the dispensation of grace. O whom are for jealous and homogenous. Very sad for those two guys to have their names recorded. Not as servant ministers of the Lord like Titus was or Timotheo or Timothy. But like false prophets, heretics. Then Paul says, The Lord gave mercy unto the house of honesty for us. I don't know who is this guy, but it's written here. For he offered refresh me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him they might find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou know very well. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We really thank you, my Lord, our great God. And for you, my friends, I close with this. 
1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, as Paul the writing, which shall sure receive, you see, and wherein you stand. I declare what I preached, you receive, and in it you stand, by which also you are saved. You see, it doesn't say you're getting saved. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, if you go back to Peter, James, John, Bonanotte, Unless you have believed in that, but not means good night. Sorry, that's my Italian. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, can you believe in vain? Yes. People believe a lot of things, but all those things they believe is not guarantee of anything real. What is true is the word of truth, the pure words of God. I know I'm radical, but I cannot be any different. For I deliver unto first of all. See the priority. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. I pray you, in Christ's stead, because Christ is right under the Father. Paul is not with us, but in the, in the writings. Believe and receive this gospel. Allow the Lord to save you and seal you with your spirit. And if I don't meet you in this earth, majority, <laughs> we will meet in heavenly places in Christ, in a glorified body, each one of us, with the Lord. Grace and peace to all.